talk with Dr. Gary Small, one of the great world-renowned experts on the subject of the mind and brain. And doctor, I do have a, a couple of parting questions for you, but give us a little update on some of the things that you're most actively involved in. I understand that you're writing a book. I understand you're doing a new newsletter. So very quick little update on some of your current activities. So uh, right now I'm writing Dr. Gary Small's Mind Health Report. It's a monthly newsletter. A newsletter, OK. Yeah. And this is a self-help newsletter? Self-help update on the latest and the greatest in brain and mind research. Mm -hmm. My wife Gigi and I are writing a new book on keeping your brain healthy. We've got a very short deadline, so we're quite busy with that. And then there's my day job, <laughs> where I've got, I'm director of the UCLA Longevity Center, and we've got a lot of research and educational programs. A lot of interesting research projects right now in, in looking at ways to protect the brain as it ages. We're studying head trauma and what goes on in the brain as a result of traumatic brain injury. Uh, we're developing brain imaging tools to detect Alzheimer's decades before people develop symptoms. And I'm running the Division of Geriatric Psychiatry at the Samuel Institute, so I have a lot of doctors, a lot of trainees, a lot of educational programs, clinical programs that I'm in charge of. So uh, as we speak, I'm realizing, my God, there's a lot of phone calls I've got to return. You sure <laughs> do. Now, I want to ask you uh, a question. But before I ask you that question, I want to ask you another one that we've talked about privately, and that is, and, and I'm going to try to ask you in a yes or no manner, would you allow a son of yours to play football in high school or college based on what you know about the brain? If I had the control yes, you of do. the son. That's right. That's in, the, in the posing of the question. Then I, I would not. No, I think it's, uh, you know, the problem with the head injury, we really didn't get a chance to talk about this before, but it, it's something that is, is really bad for the brain. If, if you think about uh, you're in a car, and let's say you're going 10 miles per hour, and there's a pedestrian, you stop short, and your seatbelt hits your chest. Well, you know, you feel it's a little bit sore, it's no big deal. If you did that 100 times in a row, you'd have a bruise. So think about what's going on with these contact sports. It's not just the concussions and the headbutt. It's the highly repetitive nature of them. And it's stopping short. It's the acceleration and deceleration, which, gets, which, gets, which rattles your brain against your skull. And it's not good for it. And we're studying it right now, and it's a lot of concern. In the human mind, it seems to me as I think about this, I do some public speaking and I think about this, it's almost as if the human mind has been designed as a kind of arm wrestle between emotion and logic. Mm -hmm. That in our human brain, we are having an ongoing arm wrestle all the bloody time between logic and emotion. Is that a modestly fair analogy? It is fair, and you know it's interesting because different parts of the brain will control those different functions, and, and it's a much more primitive part of the brain that does the emotion stuff. Well, that's the parting question. Why is it that in this arm wrestle that humans have between logic and emotion. Emotion seems to win all the bloody time. I don't think that's entirely true. I think that, you know, if we can step back and think about things, we make the right decision. Of course, you know, but don't we make decisions often? purchase decisions, uh, all kinds of decisions based on emotion. Yeah, we use in intuition, but the, the truly refined mind can integrate the intuitive, the emotional with the cognitive. And so when we can put that all together, we make the right decisions and we feel better about it. You know, doctor, thank you for helping us better understand the mind and the brain. And thank you for being here and thank you for your great work and your contributions to this important topic. Thank you, my pleasure.